Hello everybody, I'm Sushi Cat, and I hope you've all had a fantastic day. So, I'm here on my own today talking about an issue that has affected my life for many, many years. It's pervasive and has led to the death of many over the years, and on that note, has almost, almost ended mine several years back. It's not something that I find easy talking about, but I feel that it's important to talk about it. I am referring to depression. Depression is a very common mental illness, and many people have come, come into contact with someone that has it if they haven't had it themselves. Now, I'm well aware that I don't normally talk about these kinds of things on my channel, and I'm not looking at having these kinds of videos become common on my channel. But considering my recent relapse into depression, I feel that it's something that needs to be raised, and no, I'm not looking for sympathy. In truth, I abhor sympathy. It's one step up from pity, and neither of them is any kind of help to someone that is suffering, in my opinion. So, with that said, Let's take a look at some of the facts regarding depression in the UK. One in five people in the UK suffer from depression, and as I said, this is a very common condition and affects many people. Depression and anxiety is actually the most common mental illness in the UK, and will affect almost everyone in some way or another at some point in all of our lives. Depression can and will affect everyone differently. Medical prof professionals categorise depression with different levels of severity, from mild or moderate to, to severe, and not everyone that suffers from depression will show the same symptoms. Some will feel low, some may stop looking after themselves, they may stop eating and or lose a lot of weight, or they can develop suicidal thoughts, or a myriad of other symptoms that could range from mild to severe, and can potentially be very dangerous for the sufferer of depression. Current trends for mental illness state that the number of people suffering from mental illnesses is growing in number, and lower income housing tend towards having higher levels of mental illness than those coming from higher incomes. It is also projected that by 2030, over 2 million more people in the UK will be diagnosed with a mental, mental illness than there was in 2013. Now, all of the citations for this will be in the description below. So, this is a brief overview of some of the facts. Now I'm going to go into some details about how my depression affects me and how I deal with these things and who or what I rely upon to bring myself out of a depressive slump. So when I fall into a depressive slump, I find myself becoming lethargic, where I spend days and sometimes weeks without getting up unless I have no other choice. For example, using the bathroom or becoming so hungry that I become sick and end up feeling faint. And I have lost large amounts of weight during these times as I stop taking any kind of care of myself. I also become rather unresponsive to most stimuli, whether it's people trying to invoke some kind of emotional response to something to not feeling physical pain. And I have on more than one occasion caused myself injuries one point having damaged the nerves in my hands enough that they didn't really register hot or cold anymore. That is mostly healed, although I still don't feel cold as much as others. I have very little regard for my self-preservation, and have put myself in situations where I've taken injuries or been put into somewhat dangerous situations because I have either deemed it more beneficial to someone else to take an injury myself, rather than them getting hurt, or because I don't really care whether I'm hurt or not. I also become reclusive and end up ignoring all ways people can try to contact me as I shun everybody and their attempts to get in touch with me. 
I refuse to answer the door, the phone, or any kind of social media and become almost impossible to get a hold of. This can last for a day to two, yeah, right up to a month or more, and has caused my nan to contact the police in the past because she was worried about me and thought I was dead. On top of this, I have I also become very easily irritable and angered by small inconsequential things. I develop a lack of any care for my health, and I can go days without eating, so much that I have fainted on more than one occasion due to not getting enough anything in me. All of the normal routines that pretty much everyone does, I fail to do. My sense of self-worth and self-respect go right out the window and the low boil of self-hatred that I've had since I was 15 just ramps right up to 11. On a good day, I don't like much of anything about myself. From the way I look, to the way I view the world, to not really believing that there's anything that I'm good at. I've joked in some of my videos that I'm not good at playing games, even though I enjoy it. The truth of that joke is, is that that's actually something that I see as true. No matter what people tell me, whether it's about my videos, or about what I believe, or the way I portray myself, right down to the way I look, I do not believe there's much good about me. For several years I couldn't look at myself in the mirror without hating what I saw, and there were periods where I refused to look into any kind of reflective surface at all. It's only been the last four or five years that I've been able to look in the mirror and actually like anything that I see. Although, for the most part, I still only see flaws. There's very little about my physical appearance that I have any like for. On a bad day, these thoughts of self-hatred and the lack of self-worth is enhanced. Thoughts of ridding the world of a worthless person are often at the forefront of my mind, and I catch myself assessing how likely something is to kill me versus injuring me. I've looked into various poisons and the effects they have on the body and the likelihood of them killing someone outright. I have been on various medications but found that I don't like the way they suppress most of my emotions when taking them and many conflict with my pain medication that I'm on for a back injury I took a while back. I've also had counselling and been to therapists, none of which have helped me because I don't find it easy to connect in a way to talk about what's going on in my head in those kinds of official settings. So all of that was no real help to me at all. So now you have a basic understanding of how my depression affects me and there is much more to it. I have only sort of glossed over the surface of it. Um, I don't really feel... 100% comfortable going into the ins and outs of everything. I think it's probably a good time to actually talk about how to come up with coping mechanisms and strategies to deal with depression. So yeah, it's time for me to talk about the things that has helped me to deal with my depression, as well as some of the things that friends and people that I have uh, spoken to about depression has told me that helps them. This list isn't in any specific order, it's just sort of how things came to me as I was thinking about this video. So here we go. Spend time with your friends and your family. This is something that I do pretty often when I'm in a depressive slump. I contact some of my friends and ask them if they want to meet up. Or having people around that don't put any stresses on me, but will spend time and help improve my mood, has really helped me more times than I care to count. Mort and his cousin have both been really helpful in bringing my mood back up to something akin to stable. And I also spend time out with my family. Whether it's helping my nan with stuff that she needs doing at home, or going out shopping with her, or 
you know, even go into bingo with my mum. These things help me find some kind of perspective on what's going on in my life and helps me find something else to focus on. Well, these things help me and I'm, when I'm feeling low, the feeling of helping others and spending time with friends that make me laugh and make me feel like I'm a worthwhile person really helps to improve my mood. Another thing that you can do is actually go and get a pet. Having something to look after that can show affection can be really powerful. Cats and dogs specifically, but even smaller animals like rats and rabbits and you know all, the, all those kinds of things. They can prevent, uh, prompt someone with depression to work through their feelings and can aid them in starting getting better. Any kind of social pet can be a massive help to someone with depression. The validation from pets and the responsibility of looking after them can give a person with depression a reason to wake up and do things each day. And getting up and keeping busy as you work through your depression can be massive in recovering. So yeah, pets can be really damn helpful. So another thing, um, doing something you enjoy. Spending a couple of hours each day doing something that you can, that you enjoy and that you can just put your life on the back burner for just, just for a little while can really improve your mood. It gives you a chance to stop focusing and worrying on the things that are directly around you and just relax to do something that will improve your mood and you know it does improve your mood to just go and relax and do something you enjoy now i am going to warn against burying yourself in the things that you enjoy at the expense of everything else disappearing into things won't help in the long term you might get a limited sense of lack of stress but that stress is not going to go away and in fact it's more than likely going to get worse as things start to pile up on top of you if you bury yourself in something else you still need to come out of it and deal with what's causing your stress and your depression and going along with doing something that you enjoy, learning something new can also really boost your self-worth and your self-esteem and give you a massive boost of endorphins as you start to succeed in things that a month ago, two months ago, a year ago, whatever, you couldn't do. As you look back on the accomplishments that you've made, it's it's really just great to actually do things and learn new things so yeah you know sometimes just stepping outside of your comfort zone and looking at doing something completely different and completely new can really really help Speaking of stepping outside of your comfort zone, stepping outside of your home when you are depressed. Looking at the same walls in the same slum all of the time will only be detrimental to your mental health. Get out. Even if it's only for 15 or 20 minutes, it will really help your mood. You'll get a little sun, which will help you produce vitamin D and will also help improve your mood. And also, not seeing the same things all the time, giving yourself a bit of variation, challenging your senses to new stimuli, will engage your brain more than curling up and hiding at home. I'm really lucky in this regard as I live right across the road from a harbour, so I go down there with really beautiful sea views and I can go and sit and read a book for a little while relax, do something I enjoy, and get out of the house. You know, I'm not seeing the same things all the time. But 
you know, not everyone is as lucky as I am in being able to do that. That doesn't mean don't do it. You know, even if it's just popping out for a cup of tea or a cup of coffee and sitting in the coffee shop for however long it takes for you to drink your drink, watch the world go by for five minutes and then go back home. Just don't spend all of your time at home. Don't sit and wallow in your depression. Here's some other things which will help with your depression but will also help with your physical and emotional and mental health all as a single thing. Regular light exercise will help. Whether it's a walk, a run, swimming, going to the gym or just plain having sex, exercise releases a chemical in the brain called endorphins. Endorphins will react with receptors in the brain and can produce sorry, can reduce the feelings of pain and trigger positive feelings in the person that engages in that. Another thing is re maintaining a regular sleeping pattern. Getting enough sleep and maintaining a regular sleeping pattern can really improve a person's health overall, both physical and mental, and it is really important. I can't tell you how many times I've mummed at people that have told me that they only get a couple of hours sleep a night. And, you know, as I, I will sit there and I will lecture them about the importance of sleep, and I'm pretty sure that some of my friends, both online and offline can testify to how important I think sleep is. There is some speculation as to how much sleep people need a night, however optimal sleep requires two REM cycles. Each are between three and four hours per cycle, so in my unprofessional opinion, a decent amount of sleep a person needs a night is between six and eight hours. Some people have a fast REM cycle and will need less sleep, and other people have a longer REM cycle and so will need a little more sleep. However, as a base framework for how much sleep a night you need, you really should aim for between six and eight hours. And as I said, it needs to be regular sleep. So setting yourself a time when you go to bed each night and maintaining that is also really important. Disturbed or bad sleep doesn't allow your body to enter into REM and so it can actually be detrimental to your health overall. Glad to see you're Here's one that most people are not going to thank me for. Eating a decent diet. You know, put down the fast food for five minutes. Food is important for more than just survival and we need a good mix of proteins, vitamins, fats, salts, starches, you know, everything. And it will improve your mental, physical, emotional, you know, it will improve all of all aspects of your health if you eat right. Don't cut out any major food groups from your diet and don't pile loads and loads of food on your plate because you've missed breakfast and lunch. That's not healthy either. Eat a good, strong, you know, decent sized breakfast, slightly less for lunch, and even smaller at the end of the day. If you consider your body is waking up in the morning, just as you are. If you have a large meal at the beginning of the day, that will give you energy throughout the day. You have a sort of medium sized meal for lunch to sort of top you up and keep you going into the afternoon. And then a small meal in the evening. And when I say small, yeah, I mean, you know, the, the plates that we actually use for food is actually probably about a third too big. And we pile them all up. And at times I'm just as guilty of that as anybody else, but yeah, you know,
cut down the size of your evening meal. You're about to go to sleep. You're not going to digest it. And also cutting out extremely fatty foods or foods with lots and lots of sugars and stuff like that. Your body cannot process that yeah, for it to break down and actually become something useful. So you end up getting fatter. Sorry guys, it's just the truth. So yeah, and if you don't know how to cook, I would really suggest learning as it will give you a much greater appreciation for what you are putting into your bodies. And it will also encourage you to eat better. <laughs> There's not much else I can say about that. Back on to uh, the subject of depression itself. Find people that you trust and talk to them. Don't just bottle it away and, and lock it away because you fear someone might take the piss out of you. Find people that you trust. That you know will take you seriously and will try to help and support you through the darkest times. That will give you a base to start working yourself up from. Sometimes the bleakness of depression can cause you to not be able to see any way out from the dark feelings and thoughts you're having. And talking to people that you trust can give you a new perspective and shine a light on some things that you may not have considered before, as well as highlight some things that you may not have thought about with yourself. So yeah, don't ignore your friends. Don't bottle everything out. Just go and talk to people. as well as seek professional help. Speaking to someone that knows about depression can really open doors for you. Speaking to your doctor or a therapist or anyone else will be very beneficial. It is really important and even if the course of action you initially take doesn't work for you, the professionals that you talk to should and will be able to signpost you to other organisations or professionals that might be able to find a course of action that will be of help to you. As well as that, and I know I stated earlier that I don't take medication, don't completely write medication off when it is offered. Don't rely upon it but don't write it off. Depression comes from within and it's not going to be get better in the long term with adding more chemicals to your body to just change the way it works. Being proactive, talking to those that know what they're talking about and working and building upon their advice can do more wonders than medicating the symptoms and not dealing with the source but take the medication, at least try the medication, and there are many, many different types out there. If they do work for you, build on that. Don't just rely on them. So, yeah, I know this video has been a much more serious video than what you're all used to on this channel, but I really think that this is something that needed to be said and isn't spoken about nearly enough. There's still a lot of stigma and downplaying surrounding depression and it causes many people to take it lightly or in some cases to not believe in it at all. This illness has the potential to cause and has caused the death of thousands of people over the years. It's now time to stop considering it as not a big deal and to start taking it seriously. If this has helped anyone, either in understanding a little bit more about depression or in, in identifying it within yourself or those people around you, then this video has done what I set out to do. I wish everyone the best and much loves to you all.
I have been Sushi Cat, and I hope you've all had a fantastic day or night. Bye! Bien reçu. Area is secure. We're not picking up any inbound contacts. Scanners are clear. It's always good for morale when we ace a mission like that. Serving as our demolitions experts, the Grenadiers provide heavy ordnance delivery whenever and wherever we need it. Just like it sounds, our sharpshooters engage enemy targets with pinpoint accuracy from extreme range. They're also trained in pistol marksmanship for the occasional close encounter. Operating some of our most advanced equipment, specialists deploy robotic drones on the battlefield that can be outfitted for combat or field medic duty. Ranger serves as our primary reconnaissance unit, capable of moving independently in concealment while engaging enemies at close range. <laughs> 